natural underground water, which comes from nearby mountains, runs through the premises of the Gripple nuclear power plant and flows into the ocean. The amount of natural groundwater from the mountains is about 1,000 tons per day. The industry ministry calculated that about 300 tons of water becomes contaminated at the plant before reaching the ocean. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has instructed the government to immediately take measures against the seepage. Abe says people are deeply concerned about the issue of contaminated water, and it is also one of the government's top priorities. He says the issue should not be handled solely by TEPCO, and the government will take necessary measures against it. Water contaminated with radioactive substances has been considered a critical issue since the nuclear accident occurred in March of 2011, but TEPCO has failed to take effective measures. A large amount of contaminated water was also stored in underground pits in the beginning, but water leaks have been found one after another. TEPCO had to move the water from the underground pits to tanks set up at ground level. TEPCO also tried to remove radioactive substances through a water filtering facility, but this project failed due to malfunctions at the facility. The utility also failed to take quick action. The company noticed the increasing levels of radioactive substances in seawater samples taken near the port and other places in May, but didn't reveal the issue for about two months. TEPCO President Naomi Hirose says he can understand people's dissatisfaction over what the company is doing. He says the company takes the issue very seriously. Local fishermen have been conducting test fishing since last year, but decided to discontinue their operations. Radioactive levels measured in test fishing have been far below the government safety standards, but fishermen are afraid the consumers would not accept their fish in the current situation. The head of a local fisherman's cooperative says it's regrettable they have to give up test fishing because of yet another water leakage problem. He says he is angry over the current situation. The government has decided to take the lead because TEPCO is no longer reliable. The industry ministry minister, excuse me, Toshimitsu Motegi, says they should start right now to discuss possible measures including releasing water into the ocean if radioactive levels are below the government's safety standards. He says concrete measures should be drawn up by the end of September. Possible measures include sinking a well between the plant and the mountains to reduce the amount of contaminated groundwater. The plan is to pump water from the well before it reaches the plant, and if its radioactive levels are below the government standards, the water will be released to the ocean bypassing the plant. It's not a brand new plan. TEPCO already explained the plan to local fishermen in May, but couldn't get their agreement. Prompt measures must be taken against the issue of contaminated groundwater. It remains to be seen whether the government's leadership will be successful. This shows some of the measures to prevent the contaminated groundwater from reaching the ocean. A temporary measure is to use chemicals to harden soil near the ocean and create a barrier. But underground water levels are expected to rise and flow over the barrier. It doesn't seem effective. An alternative plan is to freeze soil under the reactor buildings and create ice walls. The measure is to prevent groundwater from flowing into contaminated areas. And another method under consideration is to sink a well to pump water out of the ground before it reaches the nuclear plant. In this plan, water will be released to the ocean before becoming contaminated. Joining us now is our science commentator, Noriyuki Mizuno. Now, what is the level of s severity of this issue? Large amounts of radioactive substances are seeping out with water from the facility, so the accident is not over yet. The nuclear disaster is still ongoing, and all stakeholders should understand that this we are still in an emergency and share the sense of crisis. And not much time is left. 
Until now, contaminated water issue meant initially it was about the water level rising inside the buildings. And they were transferred to tanks. And there was uh, time for a solution. But now, we cannot afford to wait. Of course, this may affect the fisheries industry in the region. But it's not just that. Without solving this issue, we will not be able to proceed with the decommissioning operation to take out the melted fuel. Therefore, stakeholders need to share this urgency. But despite that um, situation, TEPCO's response is falling behind, and they were late in um, disclosing information. Well, the Nuclear Re Regulation Authority pointed out the possibility of a leak, but TEPCO didn't admit it right away. Their crisis awareness was slow to begin with, and measures tended to fall behind. And also, they only announced about the leak after uh, three days after they determined that, in fact, there was a leak. But even now, they can't identify where the leak is occurring. And as we report on this, we find that unless there is sufficient amount of data, TEPCO doesn't want to admit that the situation is really serious. They are really reluctant in sending out information concerning the danger. And this tendency hasn't changed ever since the accident. They have gone through this major accident. They must have learned a lot from this experience. However, these lessons aren't really taken seriously. And therefore, there is a limit to how much we can entrust TEPCO to deal with the situation. The government says that it will take countermeasures, but its response hasn't been so fast, was it? Well, nuclear power generation was carried out as a national policy. Therefore, the government also has responsibility. But the government also had a lack of awareness that it is a party to this incident. There, the government's basic stance is that the accident occurred because of TEPCO therefore the decommissioning should be done by TEPCO itself and the government wanted to keep minimum the amount of tax money that is used for this they want to limit it only for a technological development however this has become clear that TEPCO alone cannot deal with this situation the government has to expand the assistance that it is giving and the Prime Minister has also said that the government will actively be involved in taking the measures they decided to use tax money, which means it's a step forward, and this is good. However, just using tax money alone is not going to be enough. The government needs to take two steps and three steps forward. For example, just like after the accident, the government should send its staff to TEPCO in order to grasp data in a real time about the work that is being carried out and also other observation data. And they have to set up a system to make decisions on the spot, and TEPCO will act if it is pushed. Will the measures that are now planned solve the problem? Well, it is not really clear. The government says that the best way to carry out a fundamental solution is to create this ice wall around the buildings. However, this is unprecedented. That hasn't been carried out at this scale. And so far, in whatever measures that were taken. When the measure did not really work out, the TEPCO and government did not have a second plan in place. Therefore, besides working on this plan to create an ice wall, they should also have a contingency plan in place.